I'm not getting any resistance, that's good. Steaming the fat out of the drains. Don't pour oil down your sink, basically, and clean your dishwasher. Clean the plates before you put them in the dishwasher. Right, I'm putting the roof on. I've got that angle there. So I can cut that one, I've got my angle then. Then I've got two timbers that I'm going to put down here. And they're going to hang over just enough, just the ship lap enough on either side. And then I'll put some stretchers in between. I want that timber, these timbers to sit straight if I was to just to cut these roof timbers square at the end they'd be cockled over which means when I put my fascia on my fascia is going to be cockled over as well but I want that plum vertical so anyway I'll work all this out and cut it put the frame together you'll see right so I cut that one you see I've left my pencil line in just because I didn't need to cut right back there I've got that. It's going to move over by the thickness of one of these timbers, you know, the, this thickness. So it's going to be back there. But I can do the same at this end, mark it, mark it like that. And from that mark, deduct the width of two of these. Maybe just a little less because I want it overhanging and not not too you know not too far in. And I think I need to finish off this board in here. I'm going to put like a little drip mold at the top there. Right, so I've got that pencil line and just using a little off cut. I've made a pencil line there and then another one, but then I've moved it in. Bring this down. So that's my pencil line. I've deducted the thickness of one and then two, but then I've moved it over a bit. So this is fraction too long. So once this ship lap goes on, that's going to be sat like that. And rather than being behind and the you know the fascia kicking out onto this, it'll be too far if anything. So there might be a little gap down there, but that's okay. Right, and well I remember, I've got OSB here for the roof, 18mm OSB. It's 1220, four foot board. And that was always a thought right from day one. How wide I made the base, depended, you know, affected how wide the roof is. So that board is just wide enough to cover this top. And then I'll have to make it up with, you know, like 4x1, 6x1 fascia, you know, to give it a bit of a drip mould sort of thing, an overhang. But yeah, that was always a concern, or a thought, let's put it that way. I could have made it narrower, but you can see it's already, it's already quite thin, quite narrow. I couldn't really make it wider because I'd have ended up putting a piece of OSB on, plus it doesn't really fit. You know, I'd have ended up putting little pieces of OSB beyond us, man. So yeah, just to point that out. That the sometimes the very last thing that you put on will affect how you start. It could be just the last pin that you put in. Right, so that's that top timber. It's going to be sitting back like that. And then the spar is going to be on there. And ideally you want the spar sitting on, on an upright. If you put it there, there's always a chance that that'll bend. It's not gonna, this ain't gonna bend, but you know, ideally put it on top of there. Plus it'll look, it'll look a bit neater, you know, with them all running through rather than higgledy piggledy. This one over here, really it should be on top of that. But I want just a solid timber there. Flush with the face of this, I think. Anyway, I'll transfer them marks over to this one that's going to go on here. It's different because of the door, but I can't remember if I, if I made that the same. No. no, that's different, but it doesn't really matter. When you walk in, you'll see all the spars running off these ones.
and you're marking these, find me tape measure, that's edge to edge. Quite often they refer to centre to centre, which is like that. You know, it's from the centre of there. So this timber that's on the floor is 370, centre to centre. Edge to edge is exactly the same. But you mark it like this, you don't mark the centre because once you put this timber on, that's what the X determines. So once you put this timber on like that, you can't see your centre line, but you can see that one. And sometimes it helps if you put a little mark like that. So you can tell, you know, where your mark is. Some people put a little V. That helps you know how close you are to the line. Right, I'll get this nailed together. Are you filming now? Yeah. Oh, I'll shut up. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it happens when I'm, when I'm in people's houses, <laughs> talking to the camera. And they'll be like, eh, what? <laughs> like, sit up, I'm talking to the camera. I need to pull it all into shape, but I didn't really want to cut into these timbers, but that's okay.
Right, before I took it down, I put a little X in this corner just so that I know which way around it goes when I put it back in. It's easy to lose track of which way around it goes when you put it back. Right, so that's what I've done. Um, I'd like to have stuck it out a bit, but I think it'd just be in the way. I couldn't decide on this fascia barge board. I let it run through there, but then it's a fascia here. You know, if you've got a sloped roof, you've probably just got a fascia going right across. But a barge board on a roof would run the full length and fly through. So I let it fly through there and put the fascia on there. I think once the felt comes on, the felt's going to wrap over to about to about here. You won't really see it, but right, before I put felt on, I'm going to just knock these corners off. I can puncture the felt as you bend it round. You could run a router down and put a chamfer on all of it, but I'm not going to do that.
I just want to show you, I think it's called hospital bed corners. So I can do it with one hand. So that goes around like that. And that goes like that. And a couple of nails, hammer to flat it. Could go the other way. Might actually go that way. Yeah, prefer that on the end. Yeah, I'm gonna go that way. So a couple of nails in there. Right, I'll do the other end. And basically what I did was put a nail in where I wanted it and then I could pull it straight from there, pull it into position. I was gonna put some sealant down the joint but I've got such an overlap that I don't think I'm going to bother. But yeah, I think I need to clean that edge up. It's a bit dodgy. Probably get a straighter line. You put it on a board, cut it with a knife and a straight edge. But I'll do this one. Right, so I put gutter on, but I went to four shops and I was a bit limited to what I could find, the fittings I could find. I couldn't find one of these ends where you just put a couple of screws in the top. This is supposed to have a clip on it. I couldn't find any 45s. You see the shape of that, 45 degree bends for this, even with that clip on and a bit of timber on. Just tack this on, it's not right. So just bodged that at the moment. I need to come back and sort that out. But doors are next, but doors next. Basically, I've bought a mortiser, and thanks to my van and earning, I've pretty much paid off a lot of my credit cards. So they offered me more money and phoning round Sedgwick. Sedgwick are just up the road from me, and I got an offer I couldn't refuse. So, so basically, yeah, I accepted credit and I bought a mortiser. I'll show you when I get home but yeah thank you thank you to everyone again I couldn't have done it without this thing right, so there's my new shiny toy